to stay in someone else's country unless you got a problem. I mean, for me, it was too hard for me. My country couldn't live there anymore. People were just getting killed. So I had to come here. It wasn't a choice. I had to. Around 100,000 children in Britain are refugees or seeking asylum. Each has a different story. We listened to nine young people who'd managed to get here and get to a school. The situation was quite poor when they left because the country has been 35 years in war. We came to England because of the wars in Afghanistan. People were getting killed like animals. They just to come in your house and kill all the men. So my brother and my dad ran away. And my, and my mom and my two sisters and me, we just come to England. It's all of one sunny way and all this shouting, then doesn't let girls to go to school. In Turkey, right, really, you don't know what's going to happen to you. And here, at least we know what we can do and we know our human rights and stuff. I watch movies. People getting killed in a movie, all right? I understand, because in the next movie, I see them again. So I'm saying, oh, they're not dead, they're just playing. This is a scene. But I'm saying that guy I knew him, he lived in that car, he lived in that house there, he had that car. He was killed, he was got buried last week. They're telling me he was just playing. That's not playing, Mama, come on. In England, we've got better quality of life. And we've got freedom and stuff. Coming to Britain, it was, well, it wasn't a bit what I expected. I thought England must be really different. Like, it must be a really nice place to go and stuff. I heard that it, it would be like, there would be freedom and there wouldn't be any more wars, any more anything else, any more trouble or anything. Yeah, I'm so happy. I'm going to England. I came with this guy, but I really know him. He knew my mum, though, but... And then I came with him, so I think my mum paid him to take me here. He has like a good city, he's not fighting, he's not bombing. People say about Britain that like, it's the kind of country that you dream of. And when I came here, it was like basically normal. Normal as it's normal age. I thought it was going to be like more time, more cleanness, or such a thing like that. Everything was difficult, especially um, the language, the culture. People on the past is different, and I say, in different language. I just say, Mom, where are we? And Mom, she told me we're in, I in England. I was sad because my I left my friends, my grandparents, my uncles, all of them. But the important things I saw my dad. And I was like really excited because my dad was already in England and I met him. So I hadn't seen him for like two years. I saw my mom, whereas my dad, my, my mom said, is she his dad? My dad was next to me. I said, no, he's not my dad. He's someone else. My, dad, my mom said, no, he is your dad. I said, England is so big. He said to me, that's a London. When I come in first England, yeah, I'm sad because no friend, no, no one going out. I'm not speak English. I'm going sad, innit? Because I knew nobody. I mean, nobody, because I wasn't from the area. I knew nobody around there. I was just indoors all the time. So when I started, I was just on my own. I didn't go to school about nearly two years because I didn't, can't, I didn't can speak to English. And then no one helped us. First, in my area, we were looking for a primary school with my dad and my brother and my sister. I said to my dad, I want to go to school. My dad said to me, every school is full. Yeah, OK, I said, I'm going to wait. My dad said to me, you have to wait one year. We just saw like a big building and with windows. But, like, we thought it was a school. And then we went near and we, we asked a person that it was a school. But then we found out it was a church. <laughs> My dad is he's coming, he's coming to my house, he's saying, you, do you have that? Uh, I got the school for you, I got school for you. I'm so happy. Yeah. The first day, the teachers were speaking. I did not, I, I didn't understand nothing. It was really scary and I was really nervous. Uh, first of all, I didn't know any English and language. It was really difficult for me. And on Monday, 
I'm not sleeping every my friend is saying you have to come to school. I'm so happy I didn't sleep. <laughs> when I come to school, yeah, that day is so joking. I just sat there and I didn't really understand what was going on in the class. I have to sit anyway all in myself. People did not play with me because if they ask me question, I don't know how to answer. From second lesson, yeah, I want to sleep. <laughs> My God, I can't. I want to sleep, I can't do anything. I was really shy, really shy because, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I couldn't understand what they're saying. I said to everyone, I'm not speaking English. Why? I said, I'm first, I'm new one, innit? From England. I don't understand why you say it. They was laughing at me when I was saying, like, hello, how are you? I was learning new, and they was laughing at me. You can't speak English while you're talking. I was like, quite upset. Yeah, I did some English when I was in Tanzania. Little private lessons, tuition and stuff. And little books. I was reading a lot of books, watching a lot of movies, English films. And teletext, I would say that helped as well. I saw this English book which says that to be able to learn English quicker, so I just had the book and I read it. It was a really good book, so after few, after two months, I, I, at least I, um, I knew how to say my name. You know, just when time passed, I just learned it. Because <laughs> what happened around me, because everybody speak, spoke English, there wasn't anybody who spoke Farsi or Dari. I didn't learn that much thing about lessons, I just learned English in my first two years. The way they teach you is quite different, because if I say the, the other term say the. The, the way they move their tongue, like making me say in the right position. It was really hard, it was really hard at the beginning. And when I came to second school, by listening, and then I learned it more. Like that is talking to me from the hand, like someone is doing it like that. Ah, oh, oh, oh. It's talking to me like that. I try, I try my best to figure out what they say, and I'm like, what's they saying? Basically, I understand it when, you know, when someone says something to you, but they point it at, or use their hand. I understand better. If she just says a word to me, it's more likely I'm hearing it, but I definitely don't get nothing what they say. We might actually live in England, but we can't just forget our cultures and our backgrounds and stuff. So at home, we speak, we still speak in Turkish. At home, we speak Dari, our like first language. I speak Swahili fluently. Three language I'm speaking at home. We're under 18, but we really do most of the like over 18 stuff for our parents because they don't know English. We've got to call home offices and housing services, the SS and those kind of places, job centers and stuff because they can't really explain themselves and we've got to explain it them instead of them. We talk in Somali together. And we don't want to forget Somali. We were trying to speak in English in the class, and but suddenly Turkish words come to our mouth, and we start speaking Turkish again. If I'm speaking to someone that's Portuguese, I speak Portuguese and I mix with English. And when I'm speaking to someone that's English, I mix with Portuguese. But I managed to control that situation now. If you stay alone, just with other refugees, then obviously you're not going to learn much. You don't know what is it like, what is it like around there. So, I mean, you gotta learn how, you gotta know how it is like around there first, in order for you to know what's good and what's bad, and what to follow and what to ignore. This country like all different people, so then you have to learn how to live with them, how to like, contribute with them, how to communicate, how to cooperate with people. I was really, really, really shy because, I mean, it depends on the school that you go. Some school d depends on the kids that you find and the friends that you make. Some school might treat you quite weirdly. Back home you get who's the cleverest, who's the quietest and stuff like that, who does good and who does bad. I mean, that's the competition. Who dresses up all nice? Who's got a clean shirt? I mean, who's, who looks smart today? That's the competition's there. But here it goes on who's the rudest? Who's the light? I mean, them kind of occasions like it. I was just saying, who's the rudest of teachers? Who's the naughtiest? Who's there? Who's there? I mean, they're all opposite. In Afghanistan, I was like a bit more. <laughs> More confident, I was like one of the 
one of the big girls that did the most things. But in here, when I came, I got quieter. You say yourself that you don't understand English. And you, you think they talk about you. And you don't want to sit next to them. So you sit alone in the corner. If you come to school and be all quiet like I was, because I was quiet, never talked to nobody. I mean, I understood, but I couldn't talk. I was shy, first of all. So if the people, if, if the kids here see you that way, then they'll become like, nah, let's terrorize you. I was like getting sad and because I wasn't understanding anyone and the Turkish people were getting rude to me because I didn't know any English. But after a few days, they, were, they started to get nice to me and I, get, I was starting to speak to English people in my class as well. My advice to the refugee kids is just to focus on studying, I mean, ignore about the past. It's not about the past anymore, it's about the future. I like all the lessons, but I love maths, maths, I like maths. I like the maths, it's so good. It's too easy for me. I hate Ari, we don't know what they're talking about. I love maths and English. My favourite lesson is maths, because there is not that much language in maths. <laughs> I like IT. I don't mind staying 10 hours in front of the computer or something like that. I really enjoy, really enjoy it, so I'll definitely have a great IT. I want to be a police. I want to become a police. Because I just, I really don't know why, but really, there's something that pulls me to it. I want to be a primary school teacher. Trying to be a policeman if I can. Electrician. I love playing with electricity. I want to be a journalist because Tell the news to everyone. Some people believe that if they learn, when they grow up, they can do something for their country. I want to be a doctor. Um, I want to learn here, finish my education here, but then go to my country, because there isn't many good doctors there, like any, any good anything there. I will go back just to, to look after my family and make sure my family is safe. But then it's a nice place to go to visit. But I won't advise no one to leave there. It's terrible. I don't want it to be like a poor country forever. I want it to be like, get something like new and get better, like just like we're here. I just, I know I can't like make the whole country change, but still a little bit. <laughs> I heard that Somalia's getting worse and there's more fight. And if it's someone said to you, uh, you have, they, they're fighting today in Somalia. So you think who's, who's who, who died, who's alive, and you'll think about them. 10 o'clock, I'm watching news, like, maybe it's about Afghanistan that I'm watching in the news and I know what's happening. I might be speaking to someone, but then my mind just might flow somewhere else, and I'll be thinking of something else. And the guy might still be thinking, ah, he's still talking to me, while well, I'm not. My mind is somewhere far from there. And I'm thinking, other kids, if, I, if it happens to me, then it should happen to other kids as well. I don't think teachers understand um, what it's like to be on that position, but, mm. but some, te some teachers do, because <laughs> I don't know, they're just being friendly. The most thing that happens, uh, that helps me, is like teachers be friendly. That's like so nice. <laughs> just tell the teachers, just take a bit easy on the refugees, because you don't know what's been through their heads, their mind, their life.